Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat. It is an hour earlier. I have I plans tonight, so I thought I'd do one earlier to get it done. Episode 749, in case you're keeping track. And the episode today is, are you being cookie jarred? It's another term in the dating arena. And why you don't want your date to do this to you. So before I explain what that's about and give you some tips and keys, I want to start by saying, hi, my name is Barry Silby. Welcome to my broadcast, in case you haven't figured out my name. Um, I am a passionate, sorry, let me do the right order. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and passionate champion for the divine feminine. That was the order. And I help women create balance in love, life, and business because that's why I'm driven, that's what drives my work. And also, it's what led to these talks starting over two years ago now, well over two years, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Today's going to be about dating, in particular, it's about this term called um, cookie jarring, which I read that term and it cracked me up when I read it, but it makes a lot of sense um, in a way because of what it means. So, there's all these things in dating terms like ghosting, submarining, um, boomeranging, there's a few other terms too, but this one's a new one I just heard recently, or so it's just, I just read recently, so I thought I'd explain it to you in case you've been wondering what it's about. And in simple terms, being cookie jarred is being a, um, what's I'm looking for? <laughs> it's being put on the shelf, so to speak. What I mean is that if someone's cookie jarring you, if that's even the, t it's the, the, the language of this is like cookie jarring. So cookie jar is a, is a noun, now suddenly it's a, it's a verb. It cracks me up. So if you've been cookie jarred, it means that this person you're dating is actually um, dating several people and you're one of them. That's the simplest way of putting it. And you're being put on the back burner. Hi, Cara. I see you, Miss Cutie Lady yourself. We, we still need to get together. We're way past you for that. Um, thanks for being my broadcast. So again, cookie jarring to explain is basically where somebody is dating you. Now you made that you made that somebody else, but I'm presuming you're the victim of this, so to speak. If somebody's dating you, but you're not their first priority, and basically being cookie jarred is where you're basically being put it, being kept as backup. So the person is dating you um, only to keep you in the loop whilst they're trying to work it out with somebody else that may or may not work. And if that falls through, then they'll come to you. Like your second, like your, um, what's I'm looking for? Well, second best is the term which you can use, but there's another word looking for. Well, <laughs> in, in bad terms from way back when, you're sloppy seconds. It's basically you're not first priority, you're not the primary choice. You're basically being looked upon as being an also ran, which sucks, basically. Now, so some keys I'm going to teach you is about ways to be aware of this and then what to do about it. First of all, of course, to what to do about it is walk the, walk the F away, go somewhere else, pick a better choice. But the thing is, you may not know you're having it happen to you unless you notice certain symptoms. So one of the biggest things you'll notice if somebody is cookie jarring you, so to speak, using that term, is that they're very hard to pin down. The thing about it is, and this is obviously very logical if you think about it, if somebody is putting you into the cookie jar, so to speak, as a backup, then the focus is going to be somewhere else, which means committing to you is going to be very hard for them. So for you to be able to pin them down is going to be an almost impossibility. So they're going to be very elusive, very distracted, and very wishy-washy when it comes to making plans with you. Now, <laughs> if they're not cookie jarring you and they're treating you that way, still walk away. Because if they're not willing to make you a priority, why would you be there? Because all of the stuff about cookie jarring I've been reading about, it's, it's almost like if you've been cookie jarred or if someone treats you this way anyway, there's no reason to be with them. So this is the biggest one, is about hard to pin them down. Secondly, um, and most overtly, in the height of passion or connection with you, they might be mentioning somebody else's name. Now, this is an embarrassing thing to do regardless, but if you are with somebody who is calling somebody else's name when they're in sex with you, that's a warning sign. So you may want to think about making better choices. So that's number two. There's, a, there's about five of them, I think, and I may not be able to remember all of them. I'll see if I can do, because it, it was an article I read a few days ago. Um, another part of it is, is that you don't get their full attention. It's kind of like the first one in a way, but different in the sense that when you're with them, they seem to be distracted. Their mind is somewhere else. They're listening to you, but they're not really listening to you. You're not feeling the center of attention. And again, like the first one, and kind of like the second one too, if this is happening to you with somebody, regardless of whether they're cookie jarring you or not, it's a game over. Because you, again, you, you, you deserve to be high priority, first priority, first choice, always center of attention when you're with them. And if they're not treating you that way, I highly recommend you treat them with the um, proverbial boot and choose somebody better. Be simple about that. 
that was number three number four let's see if i can remember these again this is a recent article so i'm just reviewing it now and if you haven't heard of cookie jarring before this is maybe your first exposure it was only my first exposure about a week ago about this term so i'm still getting with it and the thing is it's so obvious in some ways but so discreet in other ways because the thing is some people when they're on dates will play um hard to get and keep your arm's length to seem like they're not committed which again same as the other ones if the if the cookie jar or not you want to be in the middle of everything you want to be connected to them you want to be respected responded to and attracted by them so if they're not treating you that way there's a big clue that maybe you want to walk away additionally to that in this whole paradigm it's this sense of um not meeting each other the right way same thing about not being a priority is also you're not feeling like your needs are being met you're not being appreciated you're not being regarded you're not being given the it's not the benefit but you're not given you're not given the what's the word I'm looking for it's, isn't there some way it's coming <laughs> you're not being given the due respect you deserve it wasn't what I was thinking but that works and frankly dating should include respect massively from the get-go so all of these symptoms these signs these indicators I'm sharing with you are absolutely fundamentally um, disservice to you if you're being treated this way and so for me when I talk about this term it, it, it just simply overlays the way that some people mistreat other dates because again this dating thing dating thing this dating practice ideally is something that is done with respect with care with detachment to a degree and with enjoyment with playfulness but if you're not being treated with that level of regard of respect of appreciation of choice of high regard so to speak then maybe you want to pick someone else to date the whole thing about dating in a lot of ways is is the way that um which one i want to talk about i think it was alison armstrong i don't remember what teacher it was but we're talking about dating for dating for men is a sorting system a sorting system yes where when we're on dates we're basically checking off a list with each person we meet to find the one that fits us best now i am personally feeling that it's easier and let me speak to this part as well to date one person at a time the reason why and that's why this cookie cookie jar thing is a challenge is for men especially i mean challenge when for men to manage women this way which i don't respect don't respect don't appreciate and don't recommend is that we as men are generally much better at one thing at a time we're single focus our strength is to be aligned to each thing in turn whatever that thing is we're working on be it project be it um play be it sports be it be it a, a, a purpose something driven or relationship any of those things are in sequence not running parallel so for us men to date multiple women makes it is really hard to do without making mistakes so this cookie jar thing may happen the other way too because in fact i know there are women who date multiple men but one of the advantages you have ladies <laughs> is that you multitask much more easily than we do you can keep us all separate in your mind so you don't make mistakes like we do with you so when you are um <laughs> when you when you okay i shouldn't laugh this is not good either when you're dating men where you have more than one man on your um dating calendar you're much more facile with the ability to keep them all separate so you don't have these you don't make these issues as overt as men do so in some ways there's an advantage and i'm going to be very careful about this when a woman's being cookie jarred by a man because it's going to be easier for her to spot it than it is when a man's being cookie jarred by a woman these terms are so weird so to add to the list again of ghosting submarining boomerang and there's a few others out there too cookie jarring is a new term there's actually an old behavior and so it's about the fact that you're not being given respect by having you be the solo date so let me just um meta speak about this to sit higher in my chair <laughs> dating for me as i said is a chance to meet somebody get to know them decide if you want to actually go into a deeper relationship with them if you're so impatient that you're going to date four or five people at a time maybe you're not doing it right going on a date ideally is where you know within a few moments if this is someone you want to continue getting to know better and better which may include seeing them again so if you happen to be in the dating apps or dating sites swiping clicking whatever it is i recommend 
now this is my recommendation, you may totally ignore it, I'm not telling you it's the way it should be, that you choose to be honest, transparent, all the way through, because that's the other thing. Cookie jarring is done as a hidden agenda. If you are dating multiple people, be willing to be honest and tell your partners that, if they, especially if they ask. If they don't ask, you might want to offer it, depending, that's a, that's a, that's a personal choice, I'm not saying you should. But the truth is, it, it's not something I would say is hidden. The, the thing about cookie jarring, like ghosting and other things too, it's a hidden agenda. It's a, um, I don't want to say it's another way. It's a clandestine operation. <laughs> so to have the ability to date somebody and be totally transparent, because it's so much easier to be on a date or in a relationship where you don't have to worry about what did you say, what didn't you say, and the things you have to keep hidden and everything else, it's so much easier to be honest and be real and be truthful. And when you do that, then the other person doesn't have to worry about anything. Because a lot of parts about the cookie jarring piece, like anything else, is you're having withholds and you're being treated falsely, which is a thing, things I do not re um, recommend being included in relationships. So as an overarching piece to remind you of, as a dating technique, dating approach, dating reminder, is be honest, like duh. <laughs> it's not that complicated. So I'm not saying necessarily you shouldn't date other people, but if you are, tell the truth. If you are, know what's going on. And if you are, be aware that you won't be able to commit the energy to all of those relationships at once. I had a glimpse into polyamory for a second about talking about that, because I said the same thing there. Okay, I'll add it. Yeah, all right. I wasn't going to add it, but it seems to come up. Um, this makes sense in a moment. So I'm going to reflect on a talk I gave many, many, well, six, seven years ago? Eight years ago, it must be now at least. I was on panel for a um, conversation about sexual relationships after a show that I was watching. And one of the questions that came up ev almost every single time I was on the panel, which is about six times, was which is better, polyamory or monogamy? And what came out of my, when it got to my turn on the microphone, what, what came out of my mouth without me thinking about it was you can go wide or you can go deep. And the person in the audience who was asking the question said, what do you mean by that? And I had no clue. So I had to do some self-reflection in, in that moment, no choice, to talk about that. And so in this context about dating multiple people, same thing applies because, well, actually, let me finish the point before I get back to that. <laughs> Polyamory is, the, is, for those who don't know, is where you're basically in relationship, sexual relationship usually, with more than one person at a time, multiple people. Not, not in the same room, it's not an, it's not an orgy, Polyamory is, seen, is, having different, is having multiple relationships that include sexuality at the same time. How many that is, up to the people. It's a, it's a, it's a choice point. It's not something I choose personally because I've got my hands full with one person. <laughs> multiple people is just too much, and that's my point, is that polyamory is a chance to go wider in your spreading of love and affection and sex and connection, whereas monogamy is where you can go deeper. This is a matter of just physical timing. You can only spend so much time with each of those people if you have three people. Whereas one person, you can spend all that time. So you go deeper. This applies to dating the same way, meaning that you can date multiple people at once, but you're splitting your attention, splitting your focus, splitting your energy. If you're dating one person at a time, you can put all your energy that, on that person and know very clearly, very quickly, if this is where it's gonna work out for you. So I'm not gonna necessarily say that polyamory and monogamy are overlaying dating multiple, multiple people, people versus single people, individual people. I'm talking about how the idea is that you split your focus and your attention goes wider than if you go deeper with one person. This is all a choice, I'm not saying which is the way it should be. I'm biased personally because I'm not, I'm not and it's not because I'm traditional, it's more just because frankly as a guy, as I said earlier, we're very good at one thing at a time, very good at single focus. For me, the idea of polyamory is way too confusing. Yeah, the variety would be funny, be, oh, it'd be cool, so much fun to do that. But the truth is, I'd rather be one person, it's easy to figure out all the kinks, nooks and crannies and, and joys and, and secrets and other things that will be with that one person interesting list that came out then, than to attempt to do that with multiple partners. That's my perception. There are people I know who are po happily polyamorous, and that's their choice. We understand each other, and it's very clear. So to get back to the beginning, I'm talking about polyamory, uh, sorry, polyamory. Get back to the, the cookie jarring thing. The cookie jar experience is one where you're second best. So at best, you don't get first choice. So if you are experiencing what I mentioned earlier in those kids' keys of what, what may be the symptoms of cookie jarring, then you're in fact in the same place that if you're not being respected, period. So my recommendation, my feedback, my guidance to you is to choose differently. Find people who you can be more aligned with, where you can have priority with, where you can be their first choice. 
So date more sharply, date more accurately, speak your truth, and be more aligned. And here, here ended the sermon. I think it would make my point. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, actually, before I do that, I'll put a link in the comments if you want to reach out for me for support. I have it for the women especially. I have a, 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 a complimentary clarity conversation. I'll put the link in the comments for that. So if you want to reach out, have a chat with me, my gift to you. Um, you can check that out. And this is my daily broadcast, by the way. I usually, you should do it at 5 p.m. Pacific time, but I'll go head out at 5 to go to an event tonight that I'm um, attending. So I did it early. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do them right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook. Please like my page, which is barryselby.author. And you can find the replays there. And also my YouTube channel. They show up there pretty quickly as well. And on YouTube, my channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. If this has stirred up anything for you, have any questions, thoughts, please put them below when I sign off. I'll respond. Um, if you did it interactively, I would have done that as well. And uh, yeah, if you've been cookie jarred, it ain't fun. Um, with that, thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow at the same time. Actually, 5 p.m. Pacific time, my normal time tomorrow. Um, and something new will be on the agenda. That'll be, that'll be broadcast number 750. Keep getting up there. So with that, thank you for watching. If you have any thoughts, questions, again, please put them below. If you want to share it with anybody, please that, do that as well. And I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Put yourself first. Love yourself. You deserve it. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.